done and I want it done right. Here's a blank check kind of thing. So. Hi, I'm Wyatt. Uh, I got a 1935 Pierce Arrow. Came to us, it had been sitting for about 25 years. One of the things that we do with those when they sit for a while is have a, a procedure before we start. So go through ignition system, we go to the fueling system, we make sure that the engine's not locked up or anything or stuck. Gotta go through the brakes, make sure the brakes are all good. Um, <laughs> We start them up on the hoist, make sure that the clutch and everything works, make sure the transmission goes forward, backwards. What are you yeah. working on right now? So on this one, I got it running and everything, but the, the float level is set too high, so it's actually boiling over the carb. So it's leaking fuel over the top of the carb, so I'm gonna pop the top back off of it and reset the float level. Then after that, we're gonna go try and drive it. Was there any other complications when you were put the hood on this one that you had to work on? Actually, this one was in actually really, really good shape. A lot of the ones that we have sitting for a while, we usually have to do a lot of work to them. Um, this one, I pulled the plugs out of it and cleaned the plugs. Everything was actually pretty clean inside of it. We were actually pretty lucky. A lot of the ones that we have sit usually have 10 gallons of old gas in them. This one was actually emptied, so it was kind of nice that it was stored empty so we didn't have to dump all that nasty gas out of it, and everybody complains them for the rest of the day of the smelly gas. So I actually got lucky there, so I just put some fuel into it. It's actually kind of nice, usually with these older cars too. Usually all these old gauges don't work, but it was kind of cool. I hooked up the battery and I heard the clock start working. Usually the clocks never work in these old cars, but dash lights work, all the lights work, um, all the gauges seem to be working so far. I gotta go drive and make sure the speedometer works, but. This one here actually has this cool chest on it and it has a trailer hitch. Usually we're told to yank the trailer hitches off of it. Can't, kind of a matching camper to it. Um, it's actually a 1937 camper, this is 1935, so it's not really a match match, but it's actually a Pierce Arrow camper. We can go look at that here in a bit. That 1937 Pierce Arrow Travel Lodge that we got with the 35, this thing's pretty cool. It's actually ran off a of six volt, so it's all for the car and everything. Um, it's got a heater actually in it. It's pretty cool. It's got a little ice chest in it, refrigerator. It looks like it probably sleeps like two to four-ish or so. Do you see many car and trailer pairings come through here? No, so we've actually probably only had a half a dozen probably come in the last couple of years here. So it's actually kind of cool that we get a trailer and a car pair I mean, just to name a couple, I mean, exhaust. I mean, a lot of guys think, okay, the engine physically w fits in the engine bay, but how are we gonna run the exhaust out? Because granted, it is kind of similar on most vehicles, but for example, Mopars are big for it. The, the exhaust headers and stuff like that run into the gearboxes a lot on these. So you end up having to do a little bit of massaging to the headers to make them so that they, they fit around the steering and everything. So that's one thing that we run into with the Mopars on that side of things, but. Yeah, that's about it on this one here. Also I have another customer's 1949 Chevy 3100 that I've done a bunch of work to. It actually came to us. Another shop had gotten it probably that 45 to 50% complete. It came to us with the paint and body done, but the, the mechanicals weren't really there yet. The engine was sitting into the engine compartment, but it wasn't hooked up or anything like that. It was, it's got a small block 350 crate motor bow tie engine with a 700R4 trans. It came to us with no interior in it. We actually got the seats wrapped from a upholstery shop that we use. I put all the put all the wiring in it, ran all the ran all the wires through the whole car. It's got air conditioning, power brakes, power steering. Would you find that it's more of a challenge to work on something where it's been half done by somebody else and you're coming into it blind? So usually that is the case, 100%. Usually it sucks when you get a pile of parts and boxes and it says, hey, put this together. This one was actually really nice because the, the shop that actually had done most of the work prior to this did a really, really good job. Labeled everything, they had everything in bags and boxes nicely. So it was actually a lot easier to put this one together than a lot of other ones that we would get. This one I've really enjoyed because this one was kind of, the customer said, this is what I want the end result to be and I had pretty much creative control over it. So if I wanted to do something, it was more of, 
is it gonna achieve the end goal of what the end goal was? And if it is, then I was able to do that. It was kind of a, um, I want the truck done and I want it done right, so here's a blank check kind of thing. So I had our upholstery guy made full door panels for this instead of the, usually these one would just have the top portion covered with door panels, but I figured if we get it to tie in with the seats, I thought it was gonna look really nice, so we did that. The truck came with the rear end was actually flipped over, so it was sitting there like this. So we ended up flipping the rear end over and he wanted it to be more of a, a level slash lowered look to it. It was a navigation of getting the rear end to sit correctly. We had to flip it over and then we lowered it down a little bit. We had to even out the box and the cab because the box was up on raising blocks. So we had to bring them down a little bit because it was sitting way up here. It looked kind of funny. Got a nice wood bed in it. And Getting down to it, this was, the whole bed was full of boxes and parts and everything when it first got to me, but like I said, it was labeled all really nicely, so it went together really nice. We got a 66 Bonneville. Customer came in with it. It had been sitting for, I think they said about 30 years. It was actually his mom's car. She got it new from the dealership. She actually ordered a 66 GTO and the dealer accidentally ordered a Bonneville and instead of the GTO, she took the Bonneville and that was it for it. So the son wanted to get the car back on the road and get a bunch of work done to it. So it looked a lot worse than this when we got it. It actually got a new paint job on it and the engine, I ended up pulling the engine out and resealing it and got it all painted and everything nice. And we ended up putting a lot of time and love back into this thing. It's actually gonna get a new top. That's the last thing we're waiting on it, and then the customer's gonna get it back, so yeah. So can you tell me about the engine on this? It's a 389. It was a two barrel 389 with a cast intake, but we ended up giving it a little bit more of an upgrade with the aluminum intake and got a four barrel on it now. Like I said, I had it pulled all apart all the way down to the crank and we put new gaskets, seals and everything into it, sealed her all up so she wouldn't leak all over the place anymore and ran her through her paces and runs out really good now, so. Do you prefer a car that needs a lot of small things done or one large thing done? So I personally, I like the projects. I like getting a car and kind of a crappy condition, I guess and seeing the end result it's it's very satisfying with that thing and, and then working towards it working towards that result is always it's always nice to see i'm wyatt swanson i am a service tech at unique um, if you have any service questions or if you want any work done give us a call or visit our website uniqueclassiccars.com try it again It'll work one of these times. <laughs> I don't know what I really else to say with it. Usually that sucks, but um, now I forgot what I was gonna say. It's got an ice box and everything inside of it. It's got. <laughs> <laughs>